Throughout my dueling career, I have played in probably almost a hundred YCSs, and I've gone to the top cut of over 30, I think, at this point. But one of the cool things about my victories is that I've managed to win on almost every single TCG playing continent. I've won in Central America with Costa Rica, won in North America in both Vancouver and Knoxville, I've won in Europe and London, and I've won in Oceania, YCS Sydney. However, one region eludes me, South America. And good thing, Weiss's Columbia is up, and it's a chance for me to get my last Infinity Stone. After that, the World Championship will be mine, surely. Okay, so this isn't going to be just a normal YCS for me. I'm going for almost a week to Columbia, and I have a lot of tourism planned. Just like everyone else, I'm packing all my normal stuff. The clothes, the toiletries, the laptop, the chargers, and my deck, of course, as well as any other cards I may need if I want to switch up my deck at the last moment. Unlike everyone else, I have one other thing I have to bring, my UDS belt. Uh, it has gotten some wear over the years of bringing it around in events and sitting in the suitcase, and it gets checked by security every single time. What this belt does for me is when I bring it to an event, I get free entry, VIP seating, and two buys at the YCS. There really is no reason to not bring this, and probably my best trophy of all. Besides maybe the UDS ring, which, you know, I don't have yet, but we'll show it off to you once I do, don't worry. There's nothing else to do now, no reason to wait, let's get some sleep while I can. See you all in the morning. Okay, so our first stop in Colombia is not actually Medellin. Well, I guess technically it is because that's the first place I land in Colombia, but we get right back on a plane. We are going to a place called Salento, which is pretty much in the middle of the Andes. We're trying to see some birds, the rainforest, do some hiking, and some awe-inspiring landscape. But to get there, we have to fly to Panama first, then to Medellin, and then to Bogota, and then to Pireira, and then an hour drive from there until we reach our final destination. We are going to have a long, long flight. You know, every time I travel like this, I talk to myself and think, you know, I should stop traveling this much. These long flights, like to Bologna, or with the multiple stops, or Sydney, or Tokyo, I feel more selective when I do them. And while I am excited for what I have planned ahead, this is, uh... This is long and tedious, and it has me questioning my choices right now. Alright, made it to Panama City. Longest leg done, with three more legs before we get to a final destination in Colombia, so the journey is far from over. I uh, can't say I'm looking forward to this part. You can tell we're in Latin America. We got empanada at the pollo everywhere. Let's dig in. Stop in front of the quick buy here. It almost feels like I'm getting something small at every airport we stop in on this on this journey but here we went to a small little uh looks like a mom and pop type shop and got this caldo de castillo it has like a consomme flavor with a shore rib inside of it and some potatoes it's pretty simple but very savory and it came with this empanada which had some beef inside of it but also a fried egg and the fried egg still is runny which is really cool i was not expecting that it was very tasty and would absolutely order these two again all right, made it to Bogota. One more flight to go, and we finally reach, well, it's not even the final destination, but we finally are out of flights to go. <laughs> oh, I hope it's worth it. <laughs> All right, morning comes in Pireira, and it's, Still not in Salento yet, so an hour drive to go, as I said. You know, we arrived in Pireira at midnight last night, so I figured it'd be easier to get a hotel. And you can see immediately, like, as we're entering the rainforest, the, the mountains are beautiful, the rainforest is incredible, and I'm really excited until we reach the actual destination. We have made it to Salento, a very small place. Um, looks nice, but... Why well, this isn't even the, the greatest, so I'm gonna have to look for a poncho before the tour. <laughs> it is raining quite a bit. I guess I could have expected that being high up in the clouds. Yeah. Walking around this area, Salento, is such a treat. It's very raw and 
You can feel the culture of Colombia here. All the colors are vibrant. It's a small town. You can walk the entire thing. You look at the map. It's a couple blocks and that's it. You get the real authentic mountain village experience. What, the black eating chicken? <laughs> well, that's not what I was going for. I meant for we found fried chicken for breakfast. I'm also having it. That part is, that part is true. <laughs> <laughs> But this is not what I'm here for. I'm gonna enjoy this while I can, and then we'll take our car out to Kokora Valley, the actual hiking spot. The views here are absolutely phenomenal. It's so hard to describe it. If you watch the Peru vlog, I describe it similarly. It really is the city lost in the clouds. <laughs> These Andes Mountains with the cloud forests and huge valleys, the fog, the ginormous trees. It's like you're in Jurassic Park, but it's real life. Yo, made it to the Kokoro Va or Kokora Valley and it is beautiful. So looking forward to hiking, seeing some cool landscape and hopefully some birds. But we're not just here for the valley, we have a specific target in mind, and that is a hummingbird sanctuary, which I believe is called the Akaimi Sanctuary, or the House of the Hummingbirds, atop this mountain. Now, it's supposed to be a 13 kilometer hike, which is daunting, but I've done these type of things before, so I'm feeling okay. And I'm excited to see some hummingbirds. They're some of my favorite types of birds, and I feed them back in Toronto. I'm excited to see a lot more diversity here, and hopefully a lot more of them in general, just bigger numbers of them. As we start ascending the mountain, the farmland disappears and you reach proper rainforest. I am exhausted right now and I can't tell. I don't know if you can tell because the clouds, how much more mountain we have left to get up. <sighs> Still up, up, up. Up, up, up. Higher and higher. <laughs> oh, man. The trail also becomes less of a trail it becomes a lot more rock and mud and things that have to be careful with getting a footing on. It's also rather steep and it, it's quite a challenge, but I'll make it up okay. The trail persists and it feels never ending. Now part of the problem with this is you can't actually see up where the mountain ends, where to the top. You may think you're near the top, but in reality, you're nowhere near it. So I'm kind of just blindly hoping I'm near the top and I can feel it on my legs now. This is getting sore. I'm a, a bit concerned, but I'm committed. I'll do it. I'll be slow, but I'll get it done. Time to climb this mountain all the way to the top. Let's see the hummingbirds, right? How are you feeling? Tired. This is the top, right? Yeah. We got another, I guess, a mile? Cheers. Made to the top. Got some uh, hot drink to <laughs> relax a bit. Yeah. I took a while. What do you got? Sugar cane coffee? Sugar cane coffee. It's not bad. I got hot chocolate. Yeah. Now, of course, we're not just climbing the mountain and just focusing on the mountain. We're also looking out for birds. The whole reason I am here is to see wildlife. And I can see hummingbirds flying around, although they're so hard to capture in camera. One of the coolest birds I've seen in a while, and something I was really hoping to see, that's the blue crowned mot mot. They did say that we had to go down now a kilometer and then back up a kilometer and a half. And the state of my legs right now it has me debating if it's worth it, but we come this far, there's no reason to stop now. My legs are killing though. Going down rocks like those is really hard. Even if I'm not as tired, my legs are wobbly. That is not fun. I've slipped a bunch and I'm covered in mud. And now we go up a kilometer, uphill again.
Even just this one kilometer descent has proven to be rather rough. I thought going down would be easy, but whew, this is quite a challenge. And now we descend. Oh man. Um, yeah, probably won't get much of the way down on recording because I have to make sure not to trip and fall again. <laughs> and my legs feel like jello. So I'll see you all when we eventually reach the bottom. All right, and as I said, Unfortunately, not really much footage going down. The views are a lot similar and the lighting did get darker, so it was harder to take footage, but I don't know if I'd push myself physically that hard in my life ever. Uh, we did hikes in Australia on several occasions. This was so much more that I could handle between the actual path itself not being a good path and it just being steeper than I expected. The way down cuts out a bit. There's some cool things like we saw a cool mushroom. It looked like a Mario mushroom. Got these rickety bridges that were a bit scary. You can only go one of them at a time. Rickety bridge. Let's go. Cool. While it's not the most impressive accomplishment to many of you guys, any challenge that you can overcome and force yourself, mind over matter, never given to defeats, that is worth being proud of. I had to push myself so much. And I don't know what I'm going to do with my legs for the next few days. It is death uh, and destruction right now for me. The light at the end of the tunnel. Not done yet, but I think we're out of the rainforest at least. Holy shit. <sighs> Hello, it is a new day here in Colombia. And yeah, so didn't uh, do any vlogging at the end of yesterday. Went down the mountain and I just, I just couldn't. I was so tired. Um, that's pretty much it. Now I have to just kind of kill the rest of the time for today while we wait for our flight to Medellin. And then, yeah, we've got one more thing planned for tomorrow, which is Friday. Another tournament on the weekend, and another thing on the Monday afterwards. So, still a bunch to do. Nothing is physical, though. Uh, my legs are in complete agony still. And then, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm recovering, I'm recovering. So, yeah, probably not going to be too much to film today because it's just me sitting around while I complain. So. Okay, so the travels are resuming and yeah, back to Medellin now, here for the event. Now, originally we had stuff planned for the Friday, but I am a fool and I forgot it was Good Friday. So stuff was closed. That means that the Friday will just be chilling at the venue and I'm curious to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, this is two beds. It's two beds? Yeah. I should have a good view, right? Hmm? Yeah, that's the one. This is dark. <laughs> I think we have to put a key card in the into a holder again. We have made it to Medellin in our hotel area now, and there is a really cool mall attached to us that I'm excited to explore in the morning, but it's all closed now. Even just behind us is a great view of the city, and you can see from the hotel as well. Looking forward to this nice area for the events. People often give Latin America a bad rep, and don't know why, oftentimes it's very beautiful like this. So yeah, really urge you guys to come explore. All right, it is morning in Colombia. Now I can actually see the view, not at nighttime. I'm excited to go explore the mall and do that just now. And then afterwards, we'll be pre-reg. So yeah, we'll... Driving through Medellin, I don't know if I would've expected after seeing like Narcos, how big the city is, but it's massive. And just like with the other Colombian cities, being in this valley with the mountains, it is still very pretty. All right, so walking around this mall and it's super modernized. You can really see that this area is built up. It's clean, it looks nice. They have areas for kids to play, little amusement parks. They have American chains for food. They have their own chains for food. And that's not really Colombian food, but I feel like some tacos, so yeah. Enjoy. I'm trying a Yu-Gi-Oh now. Just right, for a reason. <laughs> I'm hooded up though, so. Now I'm over here taking beers for Jesse. Damn. This is super cool. Probably closed for Good Friday, but like, 
the amusement park and the mall, train tracks, the train. All right, we got the belt ready and it is time to go sign up for the YCS. Yeah. Um, get two buys, free entry and a VIP seating with us, so no reason not to bring it. <laughs> it is a pain in the ass to carry around though. It is not lights and it is not, and it takes up a lot of space, but it's worth it. Anyways, let's see how the venue looks. All right, got the stuff to sign up and head back to the room now and I'll open this up on camera. It'll probably be pathetic, just four packs of Spanish Phantom Nightmare, but who knows. We got, oh, here, get closer. You can see it. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Neat. I don't know what the coins are worth. All right, let's open these packs. What do we get? Super Rare Ashens. All right, we'll go check out my Ashen video. Should be posted by now. We got, oh, are these still expensive? They've probably gone down a lot, right? Probably like 18 bucks is my guess. Oh my God, I've done so much. Well, <laughs> it's also Spanish, so I don't know how easy it's gonna be to move, but all right. Maybe I'll give it away to a subscriber, we'll see. It's not bad. We got a, I don't know what this card even is. And a useless ultra. Two ultras in four packs, so we can't do that. Yeah, All right, it's time to sieve up my decks, and you guys already know TSX1.com. Get those Supreme Pros just like I use, they are the best quality, and I use them at every event. So, yeah, potato 10, 10% 10 off, you won't regret it. But no changes to my deck, I'm feeling pretty good, and just with how tired I was doing all the hiking and stuff, I didn't want to bother engaging in any heavy theory with my friends. I thought I'll be okay how I am. So we'll sleeve it up and then the rest of the day we can just chill. Maybe get some food, maybe go for a swim uh, and whatever, see whatever else Medellin has to offer. Uh, we are just roaming the mall looking for a spot for food. Uh, the ideal thing we're looking for now is not American and not Italian, I guess. But yeah, I'll show you guys what we get eventually. But other than that, I, I mean, I can't do much else. That's, uh, that's the night. Maybe we'll do some work, get some videos prepped for y'all write some scripts but that's what's in store for me nothing exciting or vlog worthy sadly remember i said no italian well we decided on italian i guess i ended up ordering some we got this spinach ravioli with some chicken and honestly it was not very good it was just super bland uh, the food I had in Bologna far surpassed the same with the food I had in Venice and in Rome and Milan. And what am I kidding? Like, of course the, the Italian food in Italy is going to be better in Italy, but yeah, disappointing meal, but not every meal is going to be a winner. Round two should be underway right now, so it's time to head over to the event. Feeling good. Uh, I think while I was away, they announced that it was like 490-ish players, which means nine rounds of Swiss, which is less than usual. Uh, it also means only seven rounds today, so I only have to play five considering the buys, and it really shouldn't be a long tournament, which can be nice, but also not as intense. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you updated. I'll keep you all updated. All right, we've just finished round six of White's Columbia. Uh, I'm not checking in every round. Don't know if I should be. I don't know if it'll overkill the video. Let me know what you think down below if I do future vlogs, if I should be doing that. Uh, and if you want to see the scores updated live, go check out on Twitter, where I will post them. But as far as in-depth goes, the two buys, and four rounds we played consecutively Hurley, then Voiceless, then Snake Eye TG, like Snake Eye with a small TG engine to do the Calamity Lock, uh, and then Cash Chiritus now. Uh, won all of them, but I've also won all of the die rolls. That's been pretty lucky. Uh, a lot of summon limits have been used against me, which is very frustrating. Uh, the Pearly one was funny, where I, I got defissured up making full board, and my hand was like Ogre, Droll, Double Veiler, and I just turned them all off. I still win the game because I'm eventually able to trigger Amblo Whale. So it doesn't need the card to go to grave the pop. I trigger the whale, pop the pop the fissure, and then I'm unlocked and I win. So yeah, that was easy. Otherwise, tournament going well so far. One more to lock us in because it's only nine rounds. That's sick. I really hope I get the next one. I will probably either way do the update for next round because that's the last round of day one. And yeah, I'll follow up with you then. All right, so round seven has ended. Played another Snake Eye deck, pure Snake Eye this time. Uh, or again, I guess. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Um, Anyways, lose the roll, so first starter loss of the tournament. All right, fine. I drew two Bestials, so we'll see how those work out in this matchup. I was kind of curious how they do. 
Mourner, which I was in love, in love with, and I think I drew Valor or Imperm, either one. That one got crossed out, and then after those last thing in traps, you pretty much had no interruptions left. Because I barely had any engine myself, though, I ended up losing to Nibiru. Because I Nibiru him, or he Nibiru's me, and then Flame Bridge floats, um, and then I don't have any interruptions left, so. In theory, it almost worked out. I could have beat, I could have beat the Nib if I played around, if I don't play it on Imperm or Valor. It a coin toss there, ended up um, getting punished. Game two, I win, you really, you really have much, so not hard. Uh, and then game three, you get into a weird grind because both have a bunch of hand traps. And I misplay, I use a Mourner and he's a Kribo, Link Kribo and Grave. So he forces it through, so I, I burn my Mourner for no reason, but I don't think it would have mattered anyways. Um, there may have been a better way for me to play the game, it's very complicated, so I'm not gonna go into it. I feel like it would be something that takes half an hour to talk about. Anyways, so that's all for day one. Uh, I have to win one more tomorrow now in the next two rounds to the top. Would have been nice to win here, but it's okay. We'll uh, we'll get on the next two. Okay, check in with you guys tomorrow, or maybe I'll show some more vlog footage as we just chill for the night, go find some running maybe. Saturday night, we end up choosing this Indian place. Now, this may seem like a shocker going to Indian in South America, but going to Indian in, in Latin America, it's actually been really good a lot of the time. I think Jesse found a good place that you said as you vetted this one, right? You were saying Jesse? Maybe I vetted it. So like yeah, and Indian nice is actually food. my favorite cuisine. So I cannot wait to dig in. And what I like to do Indian places when you're with other people that are adventurous as well is get several different things. This is gonna be a good meal. Alright, Sunday for the YCS Championship Sunday. Um as we uh just talked about, I am X1, so I've been one of these two rounds today. And yeah, so woke up over early to a bit of the same thing, walk around a bit, relax, get into a good mental space, and I'm gonna go find some breakfast as well. Looking for some fried eggs, I think, so hopefully it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, although it is Easter, but I will check in with you guys either when I get food or at the event. Arepas and scrambled egg. Thought I ordered fried egg though, so nope, oops, but this will be fine. Six, seven, 37, I think. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna take a bit of time to relax and settle down a bit because it's a very not happy way to end the tournament, obviously. Just floodgate, floodgate, time, like all the classic ways to lose. Uh, let me walk away, I'm exposing the camera. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to do today, just decompress because obviously, like, you know, you want to stay uh, composed and not get upset when you lose, but that's like idealistic. Obviously when you lose, especially several times in a row and it costs you the entire tournament, you're gonna be upset and that's okay. I mean, obviously like I, I can't expect it to be just completely happy. So I'm just gonna just do that and I'll check in with you guys later. <laughs> the weather has changed to reflect my emotions. <laughs> uh, I've spent in chills in the room for a bit. Got some work done prepping some videos for y'all. Hope, hope it's good. But I'm gonna head back over to the event now and see how my friends are doing. Try to cheer them on. And without being able to film on the venue and nothing else for me to really talk about, that brings the YCS itself to a close. Christian Urena won, congrats. Good friend of mine and luxury gaming teammate. He got his fourth YCS win here and fantastic player, absolutely deserving. Go check out his YouTube if you haven't already. Good spot to go and improve. But yeah, just like any event, the next thing to do is celebrate. Go enjoy yourself. Still have more time in Columbia, some sightseeing to do, and I still have the night to enjoy, so. All right, so luxury teammates and friend Christian Urena won the YCS. So super happy for him, but now we're just chilling after the event. Um, not sure what else is gonna happen, but. No, Jess, Jess. What? The hole. Yeah, I can see the hole. I'm not that blind. They thought I was going to go into this hole. It's not even deep. It's foot down. I would have been fine. No, you would have been fine. You guys like I wasn't going to fall in that anyways. Anyways, yeah, going to get dinner. Always watching football, huh?
So they use the word burro here, I think, for like burritos. So I'm pretty, I, I thought burro in Spanish meant donkey. Like it's a different, different like lingo for the country. I remember I got asked to ride a burro before and knowing Italian, I thought that meant butter. And I was very confused. And that's just the night, just us hanging out, we talking, eating food. And that part of traveling is also fun. You don't have to be doing anything unique or exciting. Just being around friends is always a good time. And I wouldn't trade that either. We have more stuff planned for tomorrow. So ready for that. Bro, you know what? You that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's crazy. Bro. Yeah. All right. Final day in Colombia. And we stayed until Tuesday. So we had a full day here on Monday to do some tourism. Uh, we went to a place called Guatepe. Or Guatepe. Honestly, I, uh, again, don't know how to pronounce it properly. But I know with some other friends from Ecuador, Germany, States, all over the place. And just see this different town in Colombia. has a pretty lake. This interesting rock formation and I don't actually know everything I'm going to do today so we'll be seeing shortly. Our plan is to go to Guatape. That's a, a region about couple hour drive outside of Medellin. Now, truthfully, I had my own tour planned for this, but talking to my friend Nicolas, he said that him and a bunch of his Ecuadorian friends, as well as Merlin, some, uh, another friend from Germany, had their own tour to the same place. So I instead canceled my tour and joining theirs. And it's one of the parts I appreciate so much about Yu-Gi-Oh! It's allowed me to build these connections with people from all over the globe. And this event is not the only case that it happens almost everywhere. How wherever I go, there's someone I can talk to. They understand the language of Yu-Gi-Oh. I can make a relationship with them. You know, I keep going on about how these amazing things that Yu-Gi-Oh gives to me, but it may sound like a sellout. It's it's true. It's 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 everything to me. All right, we have reached El Peñol in Guatape. Huge rock formation, super pretty. And that surrounding area is also very cool, which I'll get filmed as well. Uh, the original plan was for us to go up that, and I think most of us will, however, for myself, and maybe Shaq, <laughs> still very sore from our first hike. We are questioning if we still want to do this. Well, this is the second way up. But it's still very cool to be here. You can see, like, even this side. This is not where the lake is, but very pretty as well, very picturesque. You see, we arrive, we pull up, to the giant rock in Guatape. This rock, it's just a rock, but just like with all the other views and mountains, I guess, just to appreciate the uniqueness of it, the landscape, it's not something you'd see in Toronto every day. Okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> my legs hurt too much to do that. I have recovered a good bit, but you know, the day after the hike, legs plead agony, and even like the YCS, bending down <laughs> to sit down, I can feel some pain, so. It's 750 stairs, and it looks rather steep, uh, and it's pretty warm, so I think this is a no-no for me. I'll appreciate the views from here, because it still looks beautiful. Had one uh, physical challenge is enough for me for one trip, I guess, right now. We pull up to some breakfast place and it has like this I guess traditional native like drone and while we're walking around waiting for our food we see they have a farm and we can go up and pet and eat the alpacas the llamas but then we saw that we could actually buy some carrots to feed to them so <laughs> loving animals you know what I did went to bought some carrots started feeding them so they are very cute and they were very very hungry they wanted the food badly <laughs> I got swarmed pretty much immediately after getting the carrots. And one thing with these animals is they're known to spit. I don't know if it was a spit or a sneeze, but all I know is that carrot fly right back up into my face. I want some uh, good old alpaca snot. No, you don't want it? 
And we got breakfast. They got this calentado, uh, which is pretty much like a skillet without the skillet, but in Colombia style. Super excited though to actually get to the proper destination in Guatemala. Now that we've seen this beautiful rock, it's time to relax on a boat ride. The plan right now is to go rent a boat and then push on the boat. Uh, this will be a good old case of just hanging out with the friends, laughing, and I'm not an alcohol drinker typically, but I don't mind either. So let's crack open a cold one and enjoy the lake life. Just chilling in the lake, we'll see many different upscale estates. These large houses that are clearly belong to some of the wealthy elites in Colombia. And our tour guide told us that one of them, in the pine cone trees, belonged to Pablo Escobar. And the surrounding houses are from his associates. So super cool. Uh, I love learning about that history. It's very interesting to see what he would have enjoyed almost four decades ago, probably even longer than that. After a good two hours of just chilling on the boats, we're back on land. We're going to explore the actual city of itself, Guatapé. Again, very pretty, colorful. You can feel the authenticity of it. That, and there we get to try a different food called Oblea. I hope I'm not messing that up. But it's like this crepe almost, this little wafer thing. And then a dolce de leche, like a caramel-esque type of sauce. Uh, you smush the two together and you got a little dessert. And then there's this picturesque street with all these colorful umbrellas, which seems like a bit of a tourist trap. I mean, that's so easy to do. It's not that special. And I'm sure other places have similar things, but let's not be a hater. We'll enjoy it while we can. Keep exploring the rest of the city and it looks nice. And our final stop for today's tour before heading back to Medellin and getting dinner is, I think the ruins of an old town uh, that got destroyed for a construction thing. I guess we'll take a look. There's some beautiful scenery as well. So, I mean, it's been like that entire weekend, but I'll show you again. And with that, the day is done. It's time to return back to Medellin. It's getting dark out and we have a flight to catch tomorrow. So this ride home is super simple, just conk out, and when we get back to Medellin, we'll deal with what we have there then. Okay, so my phone died on the way back, but it is now Tuesday morning. We are leaving Columbia, we all packed up. Um, didn't miss much the last night after the back. We had the best meal yet uh, in Columbia, Burger King. <laughs> no, obviously not. Um, Left a lot to be desired, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, so good trip heading them out, and I'll catch you guys all back in Toronto. Oh man, I'm so burned. And that draws it to a close. It's time to head to the airport, see the last few sights from Medellin before we are on our plane and off. Only two trips this time, not a four leg journey like the first one, and I'm ready to be home. We are back from Colombia. Wow. Uh, a week away in the Andes Mountains. Had a really interesting time. Now, obviously, the tournament did not go the way I expected. And <laughs> the whole hike on the Wednesday was more than I could handle, to be honest. But I wouldn't trade the trip for anything. It was a lot of fun, and it was an experience for sure. I have had other trips, which... I have preferred, you know, you can watch the Peru vlog. I think that was an absolutely magical trip. 
but I had some incredible sights seeing the Kokura Valley and just in general, the, and in general, just the beauty of the Andes Mountains, how luscious and green they are, all the wildlife on there, and then Guatapé or Guatapé uh, with its lakes. Uh, and we saw Pablo Escobar's old house. Uh, got to have a good time with friends. Had a lot of good food, you know, some ethnic food like the arepas and the, I think it was Caldo de Castillo. I'm butchering these names probably, I'm sorry. But those were good too. Then I had Italian food. And yeah, no, I mean, I had a great time. And yeah, it was overall a fantastic experience. This is why I love playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and why I travel everywhere. For people considering it, I understand why you're apprehensive before undertaking these journeys, but the experiences you get out of stuff like this, all for the excuse of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! is it's worth it. I, I absolutely love that the game affords me these opportunities. And I urge you guys to push yourselves and really allow it yourself to see the world because Yu-Gi-Oh! has done that for me. Let me know what you guys thought of the vlog. Uh, if you want to see me doing this more often, because I travel the world a lot. And when I'm doing something more interesting and seeing other parts of the world, I'm happy to share with you guys. Obviously means not that much Yu-Gi-Oh! is in the vlog because there's a limit to what I can share within the venue and around the venue. So it means that the vlog is going to be more lifestyle based, more food and um, whatever excursions we're doing and, and friends hanging out. But I'm happy to provide that content. So I think like I'm going to probably go to Rio in the next month uh, and then it'll be the World Championship in Seattle and who knows what other tournaments between then will pop up as well. It's definitely something I could be doing for you all. Again, any feedback is appreciated. If you want to see me talk more about any one aspect of the trip as well, you can easily be included. Other than that, I'll see you all next time.